Okay, so here we are. We are at Jolanta. So welcome one and all, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. Yes, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> that is me making the announcements. But we are open by chance, and you can find us on YouTube, and we talk all things nostalgia, uh, whether it be action figures or vintage toys, modern toys, vinyl records, comic books, old TV shows, old movies, anything like that. So if you're deep into pop culture and nostalgia, then you might find something interesting there. And we are very conversational with the way that we do everything, just like you see here today. There's no script, there's no teleprompter, there's no makeup. <laughs> it's just it's just us. It's just us and we just talk. Yeah. And so today and I am David Eon and of course this is the lovely Miss Lady Pop Hunter, my wife, who comes with me on these journeys. <laughs> she also collects a lot of things and she's very much into this, uh, which is why we're here. But today, talking specifically about a journey, because everybody is here doing this today because something started that journey for them. It all started somewhere. Once upon a time, something happened where somebody saw something, came across something, they found something somewhere, they remembered something from childhood, and it inspired them. Mm -hmm. It inspired them to to start on their journey towards whatever it is that they do, whether again it's toys, action figures, comic books, anything like that. And then it brings you right where you are today, coming to a show like this, coming to a show like this, like uh, Joe Lanta or Toy Lanta or any of the others, just to um, to try to relive some of that nostalgia, try to recapture it, okay? And so what was it that did it for, for me uh, more specifically? Now, it starts actually right there. And this is, and I'll put it in front of the camera. <laughs> this, is, this is an Adventure Team G.I. Joe Land Adventurer Kung Fu Grip. Now, once upon a time, once upon a time, now if you might remember if you're old enough, you're, if you're as old as I am, there was three things you wanted in the 70s, early 70s, if you were a kid, before Star Wars, before Star Wars changed the direction of how companies approached selling action figures and the scale and everything changed three things that you wanted. You wanted the ideal Evil Can Evil stunt cycle, you wanted the Six Million Dollar Man from Kenner, or you wanted this. You wanted the Adventure Team Land Adventurer, preferably with the Kung Fu Grip, because that was the one that was in the commercials at the time. And I didn't have any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any of them. Uh, I wanted, uh, actually it was because of because of the Evil Knievel stunt cycle that I realized there was no Santa Claus. <laughs> because they brought us to see Santa and he said, hey kid, what do you want? What would you like for, for Christmas? And I said, I want the Evil Knievel stunt cycle. And he says, yeah, okay. Guess who didn't get one? <laughs> Guess who did not get an Evil Knievel stunt cycle? So I was like, yeah, okay, this is bogus. So you wanted that, you wanted the $6 million man or you wanted this. Now. In my household, in my household, there was no Christmas and there was no birthday. Okay, we didn't do that. And that rang again yesterday when we were out and we filmed um, the show and we got to the booth where they have the G.I. Joe anthology. Mm -hmm. Some of you may have seen this where they've got, it's a fantastic book, yeah. huge book with all the artwork in it from G.I. Joe. And he says, yeah, in the beginning of the book here, We've got this. Uh, we've got this spread with all these pictures of these kids with at Christmas with their GI Joes because we all had that experience. And I'm like, eh, not everybody. I didn't say anything, but you know, not everybody had that, and I didn't have that experience. But somehow or other, I ended up with the Land Adventurer. 
and I ended up with a Land Adventure or a G.I. Joe. I don't know who gave it to me or where it came from, but I was excited because that was that was the toy. And you saw the commercials, and some, some of you might remember the commercials where they are demonstrating the Kung Fu grip and they're snapping onto the wrists and they're doing the little judo flips and things on the commercial. Problem. My mother didn't like it. Didn't like it, I don't know why. Her excuse was, oh, it's a war toy. It's a war toy, which, you know, we all know now it wasn't because Hasbro moved away from that. That's how we ended up with the adventure team in the first place. They were trying to get away from that stigma, so we're gonna have an adventure instead which spawned off into other things like uh, Mark's Safari with Buck Hunter. What a great name, Buck Hunter. But it's a war toy and that made me nervous. That made me nervous because she was known to be very aggressive. So if I came home with a squirt gun that I found, you remember the old transparent plastic squirt guns, the little dime store ones, she would smash it. <laughs> She would break it up. You know how I feel about guns. You know how I feel about this and that. You know how I feel about violence. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> little hypocrisy there. So I got the, uh, it, I've got this land adventure and I'm like, ooh, how's this gonna go over? Well, I can have it if I demilitarize it. What does that mean? That means the gun goes away, the dog tag goes away, even the Adventure Team sticker has to go away. No sticker. But what am I going to do? I'm like, I don't know, five, six years old. I'm going to argue. I'll take what I can get. I've got a land adventurer now. So I run outside and I run around and I do whatever kids do in the summer when back in the day when a summer and you had no idea of the concept of time. Summer would last like five years. It felt like because you didn't know any you didn't know any better you didn't understand. Ran around and did whatever a land adventurer would do, hanging from trees and climbing fences. And there was a lot of chain link fences because I grew up in Boston, so urban jungle for my land adventurer. And ran into another kid with one. His still had the dog tag, the sticker, and the rifle, but that's okay because we're kids and what the hell do we know? So. We played around for a while and I went home whenever you go home, whenever it is that you go home after running around in the summertime. And apparently it was too much. It was too much that I still wanted it after she showed her displeasure. So this went the same way that the squirt guns went <laughs> and it got ripped to pieces and destroyed. It got destroyed. Then later on in life, and this is where it gets weird, I'm older and a raw is out. A raw era G.I. Joe is popular now, okay? And I have my own money because I worked because back then a kid could go out and get a job. I worked all over the place. I, I, I worked for the Boston Globe delivering newspapers. I worked for a local flower shop, uh, cutting down stems and doing all sorts of things, for, uh, cutting the stems off of roses all day. A kid could walk in somewhere and say, hey, you hiring? Yeah, sure, kid, and get paid cash because it was a different world then. And I would buy my own Raw Era G.I. Joe action figures. And for some reason, she didn't care. <laughs> she didn't care about that. First one, by the way, was Zap, and yes, his thumbs did break off. Mm. Straight arm, yeah, his thumbs did break. But we're going to flash forward now. We flash forward to... 1990 and I'm into comic books and I'm actually sort of freelance working with New England comics and I'm going to a lot of shows and I'm working with uh, Great Eastern Conventions which no longer exists Great Eastern Conventions has gone the way of the dodo and on Brighton Avenue in Alston which is an annex of Boston there's a lot of thrift stores there, and it's also close to where the New England Comics was on Harvard Avenue around the corner. For those of you who have a map, <laughs> and it's keeping track. And a new store opens up down there, because it is some of the apartment buildings have a basement. You go down and there's stores down there on that strip. It's a toy store, and it has vintage toys. 
and this is in there. This exact one. This is, I still have it. This is the box, and it's open. And there's the land adventure, and this is relatively unplayed with. He's pretty much new condition. He's never been used. Not really, not that I can tell. This is sitting there in the display, and I'm looking at it, and then it comes back. Because I hadn't thought about it in years, of course, who would? That's my, that's my land adventure, that's my figure. That's the guy from the cartoon, or from the cartoon, from the commercial, that I ran around with for a day before she wrecked it. I want it back. I want it back. And I bought it, and I think I paid $80 for it. And wow. I didn't even, um, well, it was 1990. <laughs> I think Still I paid. Seems like a lot. <laughs> I, I don't even, I didn't even haggle because I didn't know any better. I probably could have got it down now that I think about it. But, anyways, <laughs> I paid $90, uh, $80 for it. I think it was like 1990. And I get him back, and I've got him. And then I start making other connections. Based on the uh, based on it, and here I have Grunt. There's an Ara era Grunt. This was uh, one of the figures I bought after Zap because his thumbs broke. But with my own money, buying the uh, Adventure Team figures, he's a, he's getting a little bit loose. And I didn't really play with them either because I was getting older by the time I had Adventure Team. So I still have a few of these from childhood, and they're in. Um, really decent condition because I hardly ever did anything with them aside from open them up. But this is G.I. Joe. This is G.I. Joe. And this is G.I. Joe. And then I make that connection for the first time. Wait a minute. They're both G.I. Joe, but the scales are so far off. Mm -hmm. They're both G.I. Joe. So if this is also G.I. Joe, what other G.I. Joes are there? What other G.I. Joes are there? And that starts, um, that starts the journey. This started the journey for me, was running across this and then remembering that and saying, I want my figure back. I lost it, I want it back. I'm gonna get it myself. No one's taking it now, I still have it. And what else does that mean? Because then if this is also G.I. Joe, what else is there? What else is there? Because they continue to make these. And at the time I wasn't aware because I had been off of it for a while because they still made them until what, 92? 92. And then they went to Sergeant Savage and then they went to G.I. Joe Extreme, which we will not talk about because G.I. Joe Extreme <laughs> is the worst thing that Hasbro ever did. It's just my opinion. And they did other things. They did the Hall of Fame as like a resurgence of this, but with the raw characters, which was all very interesting. But then this went back also. This went backwards also because you want to go to toy shows and you want to find out what else did Hasbro do, what else did G.I. Joe do. G.I. Joe did a lot more than just Adventure Team and a raw era figures. They went a lot back a lot further. They went back to 1964. What, you mean these also came with painted heads? You mean they also have pull string talking versions? You mean they have accessories as well? Who knew? I didn't know. And there were no guides. There was no internet. Well, the internet was there, but there was like, what, 3,000 people on it at that time? Mm -hmm. It was something that only people within the industry were engaged in. There was no, you couldn't go and research anything. There were no books, there were no guides. I remember when the very first guide first came out. The very first uh, guide where the guy had pictures of his own collection and people could look through for the first time. And if they didn't already have one mint in the, mint in the box or mint on the card, they didn't know what went with what in most instances. And it was, what, $30, I think, and it was in a magazine format. Aside from that, you had to guess your way through everything. So that was an adventure in of, in of itself, just to discover, okay, what else is there, and how far back does it go? Then you find out there was other stuff. They had done Bullet Man. They had done, um, they had done what's his name? the bionic looking figure. 
Mm. The, bionic uh, Man. No, well, that's not no. the Bionic Man. They were copying the Bionic Man, but it looked like the Bionic Man's little brother because he was like an inch shorter. Mm. <laughs> it looked, it looked kind of silly. Then they, oh well, let's copy Mego because these aren't selling, and they started making the Super Joes in eight inch. So that's also GI Joe, and it leads you on this long path. Then you start finding out about other toys that were loosely connected. For example, back in the late 80s and early 90s, Joe collectors were already doing dioramas back then. That was a thing. So they had, a lot of times they would use Mark's best of the West accessories, especially the horses with those dioramas. So, okay, what's best of the West? I don't remember this. I did not remember Best of the West or any Mark stuff from childhood. They would also use Steve Scout because it was in the same scale. Steve Scout was in the same scale as uh, as the G.I. Joe, which was really like, it's not exactly 12 inches, it's a little shorter, but Steve Scout was in the same scale, so you could merge in Steve Scout. I don't remember Steve Scout, which of course, I think they only produced him in 1974, 1975 in that window. <laughs> So, these are really interesting, and now I also collect Steve Scout. I've got all but one piece in the box to this day. And it's really interesting, the journeys that that can lead you down, because then you start thinking about, well, what else would I have wanted when I was a kid mm -hmm. that I didn't have or couldn't have or might have had and want again? So then you start looking for that six million dollar man then you start looking for that ideal evil can evil you start looking for all those pieces and trying to track that down which was a lot easier in the 90s by the way it was a lot easier uh, than it is now everything is so much more expensive I remember uh, like somebody down there has got a loose ROM space night and I, I, I can recall in the early 90s when you would go to shows and people dealers would have a case of them and they couldn't get 20 bucks a piece for them in the box. How much is ROM now? <laughs> you know, it was so much easier back then. And then I end up having to start the journey over because I had a large collection stolen uh, many years ago, stolen by my ex. And now replacing a lot of that would be damn near impossible. And it's just interesting to me because we everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got their own version of the Kung Fu Grip land adventurer like this, where they have a figure or they have a toy or they have a comic or a vinyl record or whatever it is, something that they saw, something that they came across and they looked at it and they're like, I remember this or I had this or... I'm sure I got this one year. And what happened to that? Mm. And then they asked their mom, and, oh, I threw that crap out. <laughs> <laughs> I sold that at a yard sale. I sold a whole bag of those at a yard sale for, for five bucks. <laughs> Which I've heard many unfortunate stories like that of people. They even made fun of that in the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie. Oh. He was trying to conduct a yard sale in that film and he was like hey mom what happened you know a little inside joke from marvel there what happened to all those old comic books oh that junk i threw that away <laughs> oh, oh thanks aunt may yeah but that's happened to a lot of people it was thrown away it was sold it was lost it was broken it was damaged it's not the same as it was but we all have that story we all have that thing and this was the one for me this finding this again and I was already kind of into comics like I said I was doing some freelance with uh, New England comics and I was doing some freelance with Great Eastern Conventions which was comic shows primarily but seeing that sparked me and it led me down that path and then I start looking for everything that I thought I wanted when I was a kid hey what about Star Wars and then back then of course and I was joking about that with someone earlier when I was uh, looking for the Star Wars, and KB was my go-to, not Toys R Us. I know a lot of people are like, oh, where's Toys R Us? I want Toys R Us to come back. KB was the one for me in that red line pricing. 
and I could go and get carded Star Wars figures even in the early 90s, two and three for a buck. Try doing that now. <laughs> Try doing that now. You can't get the, uh, that kind of pricing anymore with action figures. They got Ollie's though. You yeah. can go to Ollie's. Ollie's is turning into KB with all of those Marvel Legends that they got <laughs> piled up. But everybody's got that journey. What started it? What started it for you? And I think it's really interesting because everybody's got a history. Everybody's got somewhere that they started. Everybody's got something that that or it could have been something that inspired you i think that was the case with you with the undertaker mm -hmm. so i did i never collected um growing up i didn't have toys a lot growing up i had maybe one or two things mm -hmm. but um we saw things on tv we had the sears wish book we made our list knowing that you were going you wasn't getting anything on that list you watch the TV. You, I think never, we all did that. Yeah, Circle never, things in the flyers. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You watch TV and you never thought that you could actually get the toys on TV. So I never had that. I never went to a toy store. I never been in one until me and David got married. And we lived in Illinois. And we had an uh, office, and David used it. I rarely went in there, but he had a lot of stuff in there. And I wanted him to clean it up because it was on the floor. And once he did, I saw all the stuff, and he had Masters of the Universe. And I'm like, oh, man, I used to watch that growing up. And, and I took that from him. And he gave me a Funko Pop of The Undertaker because I watch wrestling and The Undertaker is my favorite wrestler. And I'm like, what is this? It's a Funko, but this doesn't look like The Undertaker, but it had his name on it. So then I started looking at more and I saw all these characters that I recognize um, from cartoon, from TV. I, w I was never was into G.I. Joe and Star Wars and stuff like that. So I didn't collect that stuff. But Masters of the Universe, Thundercats, all of that. I started looking on eBay. We actually went to a toy store, Toys R Us. While it was still While there. it was still open. Yeah. We started doing toy hunting and stuff like that. And I started getting my collection together. But I would only buy stuff that I watched the show for. So I never seen Star Wars. So I don't buy Star Wars stuff. I like G.I. Joe, I watch G.I. Joe, but he collects G.I. Joe and it's too much, it's too big. So I don't buy G.I. Joe. But like Masters of the Universe, it's huge, but I get that because I watched it growing up mm -hmm. and we watched it again. Thundercats, um, now I'm into Strawberry Shortcake and Rainbow Bright. Rainbow because, Bright's actually a really <laughs> funny cartoon. Yeah. They, I, I got to give them credit because usually that kind of stuff you're like, I don't know. Yeah. But that was funny. <laughs> but my <laughs> cousin, she had, she got a lot of toys because her parents were divorced. So her mom bought her stuff, her dad bought her stuff, and she had it. She opened it once and then it went into a closet. So she had those things and I saw it and I was like, hey, and it's always, we had this stuff. It was, she had this stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, we had that growing up. And then we watched the show, and I saw the remakes that came out, and the colors, and just all of that just came back. And I'm like, whoa, okay, now I want this. So then you go on eBay, Macari, and everywhere else, and you find it, and you start getting it, and it just reminds you of that time in life where... If I had money as a kid, I would have gotten this. If I knew this existed as a kid, yeah. <laughs> I would have gotten this. So now that you're older, you have, you know, a little money in your pocket, you have funds, you know this stuff exists, you go back, you get it, and it kind of hits a button. And I always collect stuff because my mom, I don't know, she's a collector of things. <laughs> So I always had things and, that I collect, but it was never toys. And now it's toys, it's comic books, it's vinyl records. Mm -hmm. And I went to um, Goodwill and I saw a record in there of a guy that I really like. And I'm like, man, I never knew. I don't know why, it just 
I never knew he had a record. So I bought that record, and now you got like a million records in your house. <laughs> it's, it's always that one thing you see, and it just opens you up to realize, it's like your mind never thought that that was there, or for some reason you just never thought that, man, I could actually have that, until you start looking around, and then you see how much of it is there and is available, and there are comic book shows, there are toy shows, there are record shows, and then you start going, and you just, all this information just starts coming in, like downloading, overwhelming you, and, um, you just start, I don't know, just a whole different feeling comes back of things that you wish you knew when you were younger. So that's how my journey started because of the... Oh, that's my fault. Yeah, blame me. Blame me. Yeah, I, I contaminated you. Well, not contaminate, but just help me to realize that that stuff was out there because I honestly never went to a toy store, never saw this stuff. So mm -hmm. I guess you know it's there because you saw the commercials, but you never make that connection because you never had it and you never really saw it. So it's yeah. like your mind doesn't tell you that stuff is somewhere out there until somebody opens the door or shows it to you. And you're like, oh man, I never knew that was there. Cause when I saw that Masters of the Universe box, it's like, Bam, hit me right in my head. Wow, I remember watching that every day after school when I was a kid. Yeah. And then you go back to school and you talk about the episode that you just saw. Or you're on the bus and it's like, man, that's a figure. I remember the commercials now. All yeah. of the memories just start flooding back. And then you want to recapture it by getting all of that stuff. Bringing it into the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that happens, and that's that's that flood, yeah. that flood. But it's always the one thing, and it's funny that the one thing that would uh, get you going would be a Funko Pop. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and people laugh at my Funko Pop <laughs> collection. Well, I don't have a problem with uh, with people collecting Funko Pops. I just don't like the way that the company oh. does does certain things. We're talking I about Toy Journey. Oh, Toy, Toy Journeys. Toy Journey. I see that. <laughs> Not yes. Funko Pop. <laughs> but again, yeah, we all have that. Uh, we all have that something, and I, I'm always curious. And you know, we talk to a lot of people, especially coming to the shows yeah. and uh, talking to dealers and talking to collectors. And I'm always curious to see, you know, what did you what did you pick up? What did you grab? You know, and you get to talking to some people, and they'll tell you they even by accident because that's what happened uh, downstairs. The one guy we were talking to. And he was like remembering, mm -hmm. looking, uh, looking for something, stumbling over a figure, mm -hmm. and that inspired him to go to a show yeah. to expand on that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about today. Yeah. That's, it's interesting. But uh, every, uh, just about everybody down there has some story like that where something they saw inspired them. And they for the first time or since childhood, hey, I had this or I always wanted that. Mm -hmm. I always wanted that. I wonder if I can still get it. And a lot of the, uh, uh, really that's what a lot of the modern um, toy companies are tapping into. Yeah. All the modern stuff that's moving all of the modern stuff that's on the shelves you look at marvel look at marvel legends look at the black series star wars look at the uh classified gi joes uh they're talking about bringing mask back the um uh, kenner hasbro's kenner division oh we're gonna fire mask back up again um these are all 70s and 80s properties that have already been that they're still tapping into <laughs> Mm -hmm. because of that nostalgia because they're hoping to trigger not only selling to adults who perhaps uh, can't afford a lot of the vintage stuff because the prices have gotten so up there yeah. but people who may not have had that moment yet that will look and say I used to love that movie yeah, or I used to watch that show oh Mask? which is actually a pretty decent cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fun show, actually. 
it's well done for the time period, even though uh, Matt Tracker is like the worst latchkey dad I've ever seen in a <laughs> cartoon show. Because he never knows where that kid is. No. He leaves some bucket of bolts to keep an eye on him. And he's like, oh, yeah, you two stand here in the jungle for a while. We're going to take off yeah. for six hours and in a wait right country. here. In a foreign country. Go to the museum. I'll be back. Yeah. Oh, my favorite was in the Amazon rainforest. Oh, uh, wait right here. Wait right here. He's 400 miles deep in the jungle. And you're just going to leave him with a robot. And you think he's going to stay there? I just... <laughs> He didn't they want were the that worst kid. Characters. But they died in the first episode and then came back they to did. life they, in the second they, the boy, episode. That boy died in the first episode, <laughs> if you remember. <laughs> but was, they brought him back to he life. Was, he was crushed under rocks. <laughs> and the alien resurrected him. <laughs> it was an alien, if you don't remember. Uh, this spoiler alert. The alien brought him back. I know some people are like, hey, wait a minute. Did I see that episode? <laughs> you got to go see that episode again now. <laughs> That's about as bad as King Randor's dad. Oh, <laughs> and who Rand remembers the? I know we're off track a little bit. Who remembers the episode of Masters of the Universe with King Randor's father? King Anybody? Randor's father came back. He was he one episode. Uh, the, he found out his father was still alive. He thought his father was dead, and he was being held captive by a witch. So Randor rescues him. And they hadn't seen him each other for like 20 years or something. And he brings him. He's like, oh, I'm so glad that you're home. And you can. He was like, yeah, it's really great to see you again, Randor. Hey, I got to go. And he, he just takes, he's like, I got I to gotta go. I've been cooped up for a while, so I got to ramble. And, and, and basically ditches him. I was like, oh, no. No, that did not just happen. <laughs> Certain but, stuff because we rewatch this stuff as adults, so that's why I remember. But when you watch those old cartoons, though, like we watch X Exo Squad. Yes. And because we watch Exo <clears throat> Squad, I started looking for the action figures, and I'm like, "Whoa, these are some nice action figures!" Yeah. And then you, you get the action figures, and then you watch another cartoon, and you're like, "Oh man, let me go look for the action figures." Now that we can actually do that, because when you were kids, you were at your parents' mercy. Yeah. You were at the mercy of your Some parents. more than others. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> or you'll watch a YouTube video of another content creator, and they are showing their collection, mm -hmm. be it um, comics, toys, vinyl records, whatever. And then you see that, and you're like, man, I didn't realize that. We had um, a friend come over to our house, and um, they saw the collection, and then started sending us, dug through his mom's attic, and found some old toys and was like, hey, yeah, I had that too. You reminded me of all of that Forgot just because they came by the house and saw that we had some stuff and was like, I think I had that. So they went and looked for it. Yeah. And now that sparked. And then that one guy with the, um, it was the, the G.I. Joe capsule. Mm -hmm. They came with the vinyl record, the little 45 record of like uh, sounds from the Apollo rocket. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about, yeah, I think because he was looking around, he had come to visit and he says, oh, I remember these uh, Joes. I think I had one that was an astronaut. And I, I was like, well, it was a, it was uh, a suit. I was like, it came with a capsule. And he was like, it did come with a capsule. And I said, and it had a little vinyl record. And he was like, wait a minute and he actually went digging around mm -hmm. and found the record it's all he had left <laughs> had the vinyl record and sent me a picture of it he's like you're right it was a record i found it and now he wants to go and find the rest of it so he can yeah. put it all back together and that was the inspiration that that sparked him and he's older than we are mm -hmm. it's he and it and not never thought about doing any of this before mm -hmm. never thought about the toys but now that's got him going on a journey yeah. just because he remembered G.I. Joe from his childhood, and that led down that path. Those dominoes started to fall. I Do I still have that record? But when he saw it, it wasn't enough to just have the record anymore. Yeah. Now he's got to have the whole set. Yeah. And that'll lead to something else, because then he'll remember, I wonder what else I had. It'll happen. <laughs> yeah. It'll happen. Because you can't just have one figure. <laughs> you need the whole wave. And then it was like, <laughs> oh, well, the wave have variants. Now you need oh, this no. variant. Mm -hmm. But then, wait a minute. I need the villains, but then I need wave two because wave two went with this. It just opens this big yeah. door. But you always start saying, I want just the one. Yeah, always, it always starts with one. one. 
It just this starts with really one. That's all I need. Yeah. yeah. That's all I need. But then you see just that one figure on the shelf or wherever you got it, and it just looks lonely. So you got to have something to go with it. Yeah. And it's usually, okay, well, this was his villain, so I'm going to get just the villain. So I have the two. But no, you got to have the villain's minions. And you got to have the hero's backup. <laughs> or if it's a raw, then Cobra <laughs> Commander needs 20 troopers. Yeah. One won't, one won't do it. And you got or, to have a vehicle for them to drive. <laughs> if it's Hordak, he's got to have 20 Horde troopers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the way that works. And He Man has to have Battle Cat. <laughs> yeah, He Man's got to have Battle Cat. <laughs> so your journey just starts. But then it never ends because yeah. one masses of the universe leads to something else. It's going to lead to Thundercats because Thundercats came on after masses of the universe. So why not? And then this came on later or yeah. it's both filmation or they did a crossover. They met somewhere in the, in the world. So yeah. I got to have it all. Yeah, and then there's other tie-ins because then you start to notice things like with the raw era G.I. Joe. Hey, Visionaries is a different scale, but it's the same body type. Or mm -hmm. so is Cops. It's yeah. another scale, but the same body type. You know, they said that art that articulation meant a lot when you were a kid. Because mm -hmm. otherwise you, you had your Star Wars and you can, yeah. you know, <laughs> four and to then five cops points. and G.I. Joe is the same, it's just that cops is in the future. In the future. They're tied together. Yeah, they're tied in. So they're now you together. got to have cops because cops is in the future. <clears throat> That's right. So and they're fighting crime. You can crime. always make it work. <laughs> fighting crime in a future time. Which is also a funny show. That's a real that good show, show if you pretty, never saw cops. That show is pretty funny. Oh, you got to watch cops. It's a <laughs> Because some shows don't hold up. Yeah. You go, we go back and we watch it again, and it's like, what the heck? Like Street Sharks. Street uh, we were Sharks talking about crazy. that early. <laughs> Street, uh, Street Sharks, really interesting toy line and expensive. Mm -hmm. The cartoon, it's insufferable. No, it's, like, it's, it's God, not it's insufferable. Awful. It's so, it, it's <laughs> so, it, it's so, and they. The sharks swim it's, through the streets. <laughs> that's why it's Street Sharks, they tunnel under the pavement. And then you can see their fins coming out. <laughs> On the road, like a shark in water, you see their fins. And it's like, yeah, we're heroes, but we're up to our eyeballs in collateral damage. It basically is what it is. But <laughs> it's bad. It's, it's, it's meant for a, a much younger audience. And it's really, really wants to be Ninja Turtles. So much so that they actually take digs at Ninja Turtles in the cartoon. Yeah. Like, they'll do things like, uh, hey, you're all hungry? Who wants pizza? Pizza? Like... Dude, who wants to sit around eating pizza all day? <laughs> you know, they take digs uh, constantly at uh, at the uh, Ninja Turtles, which of course was really popular at that time. One of uh, Playmates' best yeah. lines. Yeah. That Actually, I think that uh, I think that the um, Exo Squad is their best, some of their best work. Mm -hmm. It's also some of the hardest to find now because the play value was fantastic. Yeah. I'm, big, I'm big on that. If it's if it, if it if a toy has really good play value, I like that. Especially looking at kids and a, a, something Hasbro has usually been very good at over the years is incorporating really excellent play value into their toys. A, a look at the play sets from Mara. I mean, some of them are fragile now that as time has worn on, but that's a, a Terradrome, That's great play value. You could uh, go back to that a hundred times as mm -hmm. a kid. And, and just get, uh, just have a great time with that. Or any of those play sets that they did in those, in those days had great, exceptional play value. Hasbro really nailed it, even in the, uh, in the America's Movable Fighting Man and, and um, Adventure Team era. Big scale, but good play value in those play sets. If you were a little kid and you had that Jeep with that cannon and everything, or the howitzer hitch, and a couple of Joes in there, you could keep going back to that over and over again, especially since it actually shot little rockets. But again, I mean, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the journey. There's always that one thing, and I'm always curious to know, since we do talk to a lot of people and we have a lot of conversations and we do live streams on the channel and communicate with people, yeah, we actually read the comments. 
we actually read the comments and we actually communicate with the people that talk to us on the live streams. What started you? Where did that where did that jump off? What was the first thing? And again, that was it. This was it for me, finding this again, stumbling over it out of curiosity because, you know, again, I was collecting comic books already. And a toy shop? Vintage toys? 1990? That was a novel idea. And seeing this in there, and it's like, hey, that was my figure. That was mine. <laughs> and I had a bad experience with that figure. I wanted it back. I wanted my I wanted my land adventurer with the kung fu grip back. And I got him. And that just opens that whole doorway, that whole pathway to what else is there. And like I had uh, made the analogy to with the Ara, I had some Ara era GI Joes. They're both Joe? Because I didn't remember that until I got the box and saw it again. Wait, yeah, G.I. Joe. They're the same. They don't look the same. What else is out there? What else? They came in painted heads. They talked. There's play sets. There's a Super Joe. What's that? And on and on. And then it expands into everything else. All the other things that you wanted when you were a kid or thought you wanted or look at now as an adult and say, I would have wanted that even though I didn't know it existed. <laughs> it doesn't matter that it didn't exist. My child self that's hiding deep inside there would have wanted that. Would have wanted that and would have appreciated that. And it's important to think about it. It's important to, to go back to those roots, I think, for a lot of people. Don't just collect the stuff, mm -hmm. you know, because we love it. We love it. Most people do, and there are those people that collect it, and they don't know anything about it. Oh, it just looks cool. That's yeah. all right. You know, if that's you, if that's all, that's all right, you know, to each their own. I think there's a lot more to it, though, when there's a story there. Yeah. You know, everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a story. And that's just us telling one of ours. Just us telling one of ours. Yeah. And, you know, you could... Want to tell your story? You can join us on the live stream sometime. Again, we're open by chance on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You can find us on YouTube. And we do, uh, we do lives and we do other discussions and other content. Yeah. And that's why we're here today. And that's, you know, we're here all weekend. Mm -hmm. We are here all weekend. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> because why not? And having a good time. Yeah. It's a decent show. I like the new venue. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Um, I like how open it is. And pretty much just about everything is all in one space, which is helpful instead of running from room to room. Yes. I like the yeah. lighting better. Yeah, you can see I, I like that. And I like the, the wider aisle, aisles so that you're not like climbing over everybody. That's less standing like by toilet lamps. You have yeah. all those rooms. Yeah. And, stuff, and you kind of feel like crammed. And but if somebody's in that back corner, they lost. Yeah. Because you, you, you go straight and, you know, you go to the left and you never look right. It's over it. Yeah. So. You were, where was that guy? <laughs> yeah. Do I, how much time have I got? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that happens. There's been times where I went to some of the shows and you guys have filmed it. And I went back and I didn't even see that. I've heard that too. Because we felt, we do film, if you're not familiar with the channel, we also tour a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. And um, we toured this one yesterday. And we get that too from people. I was there. I didn't see that guy. <laughs> or I didn't see, <laughs> not just, you know, mm -hmm. Toylanta or... Uh, Joel Anta, but a lot of shows that we do, th yeah. things things get overlooked. But yeah, again, I am uh, David Eon, and this is the lovely Miss Lady Pop Hunter from Open by Chance, and that is our panel for the day. Oh, did yeah? Anybody have any questions or comments? Does anybody have any questions or comments? No. Okay. Everybody satisfied? Yeah. All right. I'll